I see large crystals. I li- see a lot of crystals. Mm-hmm. Large crystals. Large crystals. Mm-hmm. What color are these crystals? They're violet. Mm-hmm. Seems to be a cave. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Look around this cave. Is it illuminated? It is, but it's natural light. Mm-hmm. It's very violet. There are very sharp, jagged edges. Mm-hmm. And as you're looking at these violet crystals in this cave, do you feel that you have a body there? Let's focus on the observer of this crystal cave. Are you physical? Or are you just simply consciousness? Let's take a look. I feel like I'm just consciousness. Mm -hmm. Very good. So as consciousness, you could travel in any direction. Let's explore this cave and see where you are. Tell me everything you see. Seems to be deep underground. Mm-hmm. But they seem to be very, very old. Mm-hmm. The cave itself seems very, very old. How big is this cave? It's very large. Mm-hmm. And when you say it feels old, I want you to sense it. Use your senses and tell me if you could communicate with this cave, with these crystals. What do you feel? It actually feels for like ancient energy. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's part of Gaia. Mm-hmm. But it seems to resonate with energy. Mm-hmm. What do you imagine you're doing there today? What's the purpose of being in this cave? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out why you've been drawn to this cave. What do these crystals need to tell you today? Sensing like they're... It's time for them to reactivate. Mm Mm-hmm. Tell me more. They've been here for for a long time, but they the part of something much bigger. Mm-hmm. Let's find out what that is. Where do these crystals come from, and why are they there? What's their story? It seems like they're part of the Earth grid. Mm-hmm. And there are others that are part of Gaia that are in other locations. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand why I'm being shown this. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to meld with them, meld with their energy, feel it. What is this energy? I don't know, it's not... Mm -hmm. Feel it. What do you get from it? Tap into it. Allow those crystals to connect with your own energy. 
and transmit some information that you need to know today. The information will come as thoughts. It just seems like it's it's been hidden away so that others can't get to it. Mm-hmm. It's not accessible from outside. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's just a large cavern and it's just completely hollowed out with the exception of the very center. Mm-hmm. Which is a very, very large violet crystal. Mm-hmm. Is there any significance to this one large crystal? Get closer to it. Zoom in on it. Allow yourself to interact with it. What do you feel? I don't really feel anything with Mm -hmm. it other than just understanding it, that it's very ancient. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. good. All right. Is there anything else of importance in this cavern? Take a look around and see. No, I don't see anything that... Okay, very good. Explains. So let's close that scene. Allow yourself to close that scene, and now let's go to another scene of significance, importance, that will help you understand what you just saw. I'm going to count from five back to one. When I get to number one, I will tap your forehead and you will see the next scene. Taking a deep breath in, five, going through time and space now, four, to the next significant scene. Three, allowing the images to come. Two, almost there now. And one, be there now. What do you see in your mind's eye? Where are you? I don't know. All right. We can work with I don't know. Tell me if this I don't know area has a color. Seems to have a a tan color. Mm Mm-hmm. A tan color. Mm Mm-hmm. Almost a mauve-ish color. Yes. But it's just color. Mm Mm-hmm. Does this color move? has any movement to it. Focus on it and see. Does it move in any direction? No. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to get closer to this color. Allow yourself to zoom in. What do you imagine this is? What comes to mind? Almost seems like a surface Mm. of... Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Of an area. Mm Mm-hmm. So allow yourself to zoom in even closer? And tell me what this surface is. What's it made out of? Trust your first impression. 
seems like it's almost a surface of a planet or a, mm -hmm. a desert or mm -hmm. something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Very good. And as you're focusing on this, do you feel that you have a physical body there? Take a look. Use all of your senses. See if you have a physical body. I don't feel one. Mm -hmm. So as the observer of this surface, you can now move around and see what else is there. Use all of your senses. Feel it. Know it. What is this place? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Don't question it. Just say it. I feel like there are earth or sand type towers. Mm hmm that have grown out of the landscape. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine these towers are for? They almost look like they could be tubes of a sort. Mm -hmm. Like exhaust tubes from something underneath it. Mm -hmm. But they look more natural made than man-made. They're more organic? Yes. Mm -hmm. How tall are these tubes? They're quite tall. Mm -hmm. Could be hundreds of feet. Mm -hmm. Can you get closer to these tubes to see what they are? They almost look like they could be dwellings of a sort. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any entrances. Mm -hmm. So if you're consciousness, you don't need an entrance. You could just be there. So allow yourself to close this scene and now be in this dwelling. Be there now. What comes to your mind? They just seem like they're very tall, large, could almost be considered anthills or termite mm -hmm. mounds. Mm -hmm. Very, very tall. Let's see what's in them. They look empty. Mm -hmm. So use your senses and see if there's ever been anybody in these dwellings. Feel it. No, it doesn't look like there's anything that's left in them. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine that these dwellings are for? Just your impression. They look like they're just part of the landscape. Mm -hmm. What do you see in them? They look like they're just part of the landscape of a desert, mm -hmm. um, very barren landscape. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's find out why it is that you're in this place. I'd like for you to close that scene. And now let's go either forward or backwards in time. That will allow you to know what this place is all about. Allow yourself now to move through time and space to find the significance of this planet. Be there now. Where are you? They don't appear to have changed. 
Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Just looks like a very desolate landscape. Mm-hmm. I'd like for you to use your emotions now. Connect with your emotions. And let's find out how you feel about this place. Connect. Seems lifeless. Mm -hmm. Seems that something tragic has happened that is... Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to follow that emotion. Follow that emotion of lifelessness. And let's find out what has happened on this planet. Follow that feeling until we get the information. Keep following it. What has happened to this planet? What happened to the life here? It seems like there was a a battle of some sort, but it was so, so long ago. Mm -hmm. Keep following it. Keep following it. Follow your emotion. Feel it. What happened here? See it. Seems like there was a very large catastrophe of some sort. Mm hmm. Was it a natural disaster? Let's find out. Seems to have the appearance of something of a cosmic event. Mm hmm. Or the landscape or the atmosphere was removed. Mm hmm. Keep following it back. Keep going backwards in time and you'll see what happened. What happened to remove that environment? What caused it? See it. Feel it. And know it. It seems like there was something that came through the solar system. Mm -hmm. It disrupted all of the the planets and the spheres and the moons that were part of that solar system. Mm -hmm. And this particular planet was did not escape its its cosmic destruction. Mm -hmm. How are you impacted by this? Let's find out how you were impacted. Feel it. <sighs> Seems like there were... <sighs> Seems like there were... That were lost. Buildings. Billions of souls. Billions of souls were lost. It's like you can hear them all screaming as if the event happened. Mm -hmm. It's solar system wide. It's all the planets were affected by it. Mm -hmm. How are you affected? Are you a part of those souls? Or were yes. you watching? I think I was one of them. Mm -hmm. Some sort of a cosmic event happened mm -hmm. that disrupted all the planets, everything. 
Let's find it's out. moved out of its systems. Let's find out where you went as the soul. Allow yourself to feel it and see where all of these souls went to. Where did you go? What happened to you? Follow that path. Tell me what's going on. What do you feel? I feel that all the souls all are are all pulled together. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just so much pain. Mm Mm-hmm. Much pain. Mm-hmm. What is this pain associated with? Give it emotions, give it feelings, give it words. It's all fear. Mm-hmm. Disruption, it, it happens so fast. Mm-hmm. But all the souls don't know where they are. Yes. What happens? What happens as these billions of souls unite in fear? There's just no place for all of us to go. Mm-hmm. What happens next? See the evolution. See what happens. Where do you go? What do you do? It's like we're we're waiting for some sort of help Mm -hmm. to come in to help us out. Mm -hmm. And as you're waiting, What feelings are coming through? Feelings of fear and of hopelessness and... Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's lost. Mm -hmm. So as you're there with these souls, I'd like for you to call out Call out to the light. Use your mind to call for that ray of light. Just seems that whatever the event is, the cosmic, cosmic catastrophe has affected so many other life forms. Mm-hmm. What happened? What happens next? We float mm-hmm. aimlessly together. Mm-hmm. With no physical bodies and all the every all the souls just seem to hold each other. Mm-hmm. So let's go forward in time now. As you continue to go together, let's see what happens next. happens next. It seems that there's a consciousness that's trying to calm us 
Mm-hmm. Tell us if everything will be okay. But there are no answers. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. We just float mm-hmm. out there while we wait for something or someone or something to help us. Mm-hmm. Accelerate time and space to the next event. Let's go to the next significant event. See that there's like a deal being made Mm -hmm. for a planet to take us, take us in. Mm -hmm. I just keep hearing Tara. Mm -hmm. But where to go? (sighs) But where to go to Tara? Mm -hmm. For another chance. For another chance. How does that make you feel? There's hope Mm -hmm. that we're being given another chance to manifest into physical form again, Mm -hmm. to continue our journeys that we were not able to complete as being part of the previous planetoid. Mm -hmm. So take me through this process. Are you prepared in any way for this next physical manifestation? Seems like there's guidance to help us to separate and to let go of one another. Mm -hmm. And that we're being told that we'll be part of the of Terra as one of its new forms Mm -hmm. and that we will be part of it and can continue our journeys that we came into the previous incarnation and the previous planetoid and there were mistakes that were made things that were done Mm -hmm. that were not done by all of us but by others yes but that So allow yourself to see the process and tell me what happens. It seems that we're individualized mm-hmm. souls being told that we will be taken down to Terra and that we will take on a new form. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens. Keep following the process. How do you get to Tara? Seems that we're told that we will be part of groups. Mm-hmm. That we will be separated by our genders. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand the process of how we come from a soul to a physical entity. Mm -hmm. Keep following the process and see what happens next. Seems like we're, that I'm in front of a group, small group of physical entities that are telling me that it's my turn to go down. Mm-hmm. What do they look like? They're seem humanoids, mm-hmm. as we understand humans. Mm-hmm. How are they dressed? Or 
I guess they would dress it just in. They seem similar to robes, but they're not robes mm-hmm. or tunics. Mm-hmm. They just seem to be just covered in white mm-hmm. clothing. Yes. Not as in pants and shirts. Mm-hmm. Like, but yes. One piece, but not. They just seem like robes. How many do you see? How many are in this group? Oh, it looks like there's probably about five or seven. Mm-hmm. But it almost seems like an assembly line. Mm-hmm. We're just being told that this is what's going to happen. Yes. Being sent down. Not of a choice. Not that we're being punished, but just that there is no choice. Mm-hmm. Just being sent down. So let's see what happens next. Follow the process. What do you see next? I just see that um, on Terra. Mm-hmm. Look around you. What do you see around you? I see a green landscape. Mm-hmm. I see others, but they seem to be in the same... Just gazing at everything, they're not... Talking, they're not really communicating with one another. Mm-hmm. They just seem like they're just reviewing their new environment. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you have a physical body now? Take a look. Yes, I do. What does it look like? Male or female? I look male. Mm-hmm. Take a look at your form. Look down at your feet. Seem to be brown tone colored skin. Mm-hmm. Um, not real tall. Mm-hmm. Just How old do you feel there? Probably am I. 20s, mm-hmm. just only based on the feeling. Yes, that's all you need to do. Are you clothed? No, actually, I don't see any clothes. Mm-hmm. I don't see anything on my feet. Mm-hmm. Take a look at your hands. Do you have anything in your hands? No. Mm hmm. Take a look at your head, your hair. What does it look like? Seem to be quite hairy, but not as an animal hairy. Mm hmm. Just. Take a look at your body. Does it have hair also? Some. It's not ape-like. It's Mm -hmm. just... But it seems to have hair, yes. Yes. But not real heavy hair. Just... Mm -hmm. Just a... Just hair. Good. So let's find out what happens now that you are in Terra. I'd like for you to continue and see what happens. What is this life on Terra? all about. Seems to be very easy, just... <coughs> I guess I wouldn't say they're just existing. Mm-hmm. Don't seem to have a lot of communication with others. It's almost as if each person or each entity is starting getting to know itself. But not much conversation between. Don't seem to see any females. Mm-hmm. We're in a fairly jungle-type environment. Yes. 
but it's not, you don't see any open meadows or anything of that significance, more jungle related. Mm -hmm. Take a look and see if there's any way that you nourish your body. Looks like there's just fruits and vegetables everywhere, mm -hmm. just for the taking. Yes. So would you say this is a comfortable life? I would say it, it seems to be without fear, without mm -hmm. labor, mm -hmm. just existing. Very good. So let's close this scene now. Let's go to now to the another significant scene in that same lifetime when something important is happening. Be there now. Where are you? Same environment, just to the lower. Mm -hmm. No drama, mm -hmm. no fear of anything around, just kind of existing. Very good. So now let's go. Closing that scene to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Go to the last day. I just feel myself leaning, sitting down, leaning up against a, a tree. Mm -hmm. Just not in any real pain or anything, just laying back, falling asleep, and mm -hmm. it's over. So let's see what happens after you leave that body. I'd like for you to detach from that body. And let's see where you go. Allow Nate now for you to look back at that lifetime. How has this changed the way you feel before you came into it? It just feels that we're loved and surrounded by positive affirmations of feelings. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be okay. Very good. So follow that path and see where it is that your spirit goes after it leaves that body. Where do you go to next? Allow yourself to be there now. What is this place that you go to? It feels, it feels like I'm standing back in front of the same people. Mm -hmm. Has anything changed? Anything shifted? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just that I'll be sent back and mm -hmm. there's no real plans or anything I can conceive of. Mm -hmm. And that I will see others that I remember on the next time. Very good. So tell me what happens next. Close this scene and open the scene to the next lifetime. Where are you? <sighs> Connect with the feelings and the emotions of this place. I just feel like I'm back on Terra in a different environment, but mm -hmm very close to the same feelings mm -hmm. of no fear and just a loving energy around everything. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your body. Has it changed from the last incarnation? Not much. Mm -hmm. I still feel like I'm a male. Yes. Very similar tones and feelings. Mm -hmm. 
So I'd like for you to just flow through this lifetime, seeing it like a fast-moving picture. And tell me what you experience from this. What is this lifetime all about? Seems very similar to the previous. Mm -hmm. Connect with the feelings of it. Just the feelings of comfort and no, mm -hmm. no stress, no fear. Very good. So as you're going through this, Allow yourself now to go to the last day of that lifetime and tell me how it ended in that life. I feel very similar that I just mm -hmm. sat down and I'm no longer in, in my body. Very good. So now, as you look back at that lifetime, what was the purpose of you seeing the same lifetime again? Why did you live that lifetime similar to the other one? Now that you have understanding. It's almost a preparation that... Mm -hmm. that everything is going to be okay. Mm-hmm for all the souls that were on our previous planetoid that are now here and it seems as though those who were not part of the problem of the demise of the other planet are not being punished we're mm -hmm. being brought here into almost be on vacation so to speak mm -hmm. very good so now I'd like for you to look at your heart and let's take a look at that heart and see what's going on with that heart. What does that heart look like? Does it seem like there's anything around it or blocking it? Or? It feels like there's something wrapped around it. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look and see what's wrapped around. What do you feel is wrapping that? Is it ropes? Is it a membrane? What does it look like to you? What have this? It just feels like a membrane or right. something that is. All right. So, tight. so this membrane does it have a color? No. No. It doesn't. All right. So, what is this membrane doing to your heart? What is the purpose for it being there? Let's find out. Trust your impression. What is it doing there? It's just holding it. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pressure. Uh huh. Is it holding it to protect it? Or to keep it from feeling anything? Let's find out. What is the purpose of it? What do you imagine the purpose of it is? What comes to mind? Does it seem normal? It just seems like something is holding it, so it's not All right, so free. Let's, let's see if it's connected to anything or anyone. I'd like for you to see if that membrane is connected to anyone or anything, follow that membrane. Follow the origin. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Follow the origin. I think it has almost like a protection. Mm -hmm. 
Let's find so, out who put it there. So I don't let anybody hurt me. Mm -hmm. Did you put it there or did somebody else? I think, oh, okay. I think I put it there. Mm -hmm. How old are you when you put it there? Very young. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of you wrapping your heart in this membrane? So I wouldn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. Those who say they love you but then hurt you. Uh huh. And now we understand why this little boy protected his heart. And now that this boy has grown up, does he need? to protect this heart in this way anymore? No. No. All right. No, he doesn't. So, at this, all. so you can now ask for this to re be removed. What would you like to use to remove this membrane? Just liquid love. All right. So go ahead and bring in that liquid love. What color is that liquid love? It is a clear liquid. Beautiful. So allow it now to begin surrounding that heart, dissolving that membrane. And as it dissolves, it can either evaporate or just flow right out. And tell me what the heart looks like now that it's unwrapped. Feel it. I don't feel the pressure as mm -hmm. so much. I need to use the restroom. Very good. So I'm going to go ahead and tap your shoulder. And when I do, you'll open your eyes. I will remove your microphones. And then you can go to the bathroom when you come back. We'll come back and go even deeper. Eyes open. You're doing great. And Joe has brought questions here today. He's had experiences where he's been able to see vehicles, ships. Can you tell me a little bit about this experience? What was that all about? Could you take him back to that moment now? Where he witnessed that cigar-shaped UFO? Let's find out what happened. Take me through the event. Sitting in his office, he looked up. Mm -hmm. Before he looked up, though, he felt something was signaling him. Something was looking at him. Something was around him. Mm -hmm. He looked, didn't see anything. That was on purpose. Mm -hmm. Why is that? We wanted to get his attention to trust his intuition. Mm -hmm senses something, follow through with it. And he did, he looked. He didn't just blow it off, but he understood that something was there. <laughs> Moments later that it was revealed to him, ship. Mm -hmm. It was to help him to understand that what he has known and saw as a child, which he saw many ships, but didn't remember them, that these were real, and these were all part of what's going on around him. Mm -hmm. They've been here. They've been here for much longer than what even mainstream media would like to tell you. 
but we've been here. And who is it that wanted to get his attention? Are you one of the ones on the ship? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Who are you? We are the Arcturians. Mm -hmm. And what do you have to do with Joe's life? We've been guiding him. Mm -hmm. He has a part to play in the upcoming event. We and so many others have been asked to come here to be a part of the event. Mm -hmm. He is part of it. That's why he left his workspace mm -hmm. early so that he could focus on the information that he needed to know. Mm -hmm. Now, when he was a child and he saw all these, these ships, was it the same individuals? No. No. Why does he have a connection? Why can he see all these ships? He has brightness of his soul. Mm -hmm. There are many that have attacked him of the psychic, the negatives. They've attacked him many, many times because mm -hmm. he's such a bright soul. Mm -hmm. We also recognize that many, many lifetimes ago. It's the reason why his childhood was so rough, and tough, as he calls it. Mm -hmm. Because he has to he has to be in touch with his senses and understand what's going on around him. We've been here before. We have watched him before. Mm -hmm. But I know he thinks that we have brought him out to our ship and we have not. Mm. So he didn't have any missing time or anything like that? No. Okay. So you speak of this event. Is this event something that's been planned for a while? Since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about this event? What is it? It is time. The event will be galactic wide. Mm -hmm. but there are many that are outside. Many, many that are outside of the earth plane that are here to watch the event. Mm -hmm. Soul or soulless will give a blast of its energy and when that happens all those of the lower vibration and lower frequency lower energies will not be able to tolerate it. It is their time to leave. And it is happening soon. Can you tell me a little bit about this vibration? Why is it that someone of a lower vibration will not be able to tolerate it? What will they feel? It will be pain, much pain for them. They cannot at all absorb the frequencies. They're much higher frequencies, high vibration. Mm -hmm. They who live in the lower vibration, the lower energies, cannot tolerate it. They will drive them crazy. They will basically, in many ways, be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It is their time. This has been planned for millions of years. Mm -hmm. It is time. The solar system is going through the galactic portion where the energy is much higher. Mm -hmm. And then nothing can stop us. It is coming. So what happens to those that are of a higher vibration? Many are awakening right now, and they are understanding the higher vibration. Mm -hmm. That is the awakening process. Mm -hmm. Gaia is also raising her vibration for her ascension, her birth, if you would, mm -hmm. into the next plane, to the fourth density. 
And in doing so, all those sentient entities that are upon her, that are prepared in the same vibration, the same frequency as her, will travel with her to the following next evolutionary step for her. Mm -hmm. Those that are not of the same vibration cannot go. So it almost gives me a, a, an, an image of uh, flies that f run into a, a light and get zapped. Is this kind of like what's going to happen to these people who... They won't be physically zapped from the energy itself, but the vibration in their mm. bodies can no longer. Mm. It would be like, as Joe likes to say, we are all wearing earth suits. Mm. And we have to wear these suits in order to be and to, for the soul to be able to make its path and what it's here for, mm -hmm. it has to have a suit okay. so that it can survive in this atmosphere and in this vibration. Mm -hmm. When the vibration raises, so will the energy and the earth suit that the individual is wearing mm -hmm. has to adapt to that. Okay. And if they are of the evil source or the negative, the vibration cannot at all tolerate that. Okay. They will go drive mad, they will be driven mad, they will, for the most part, be killed. Hmm. They will all die off and then go to the next location that is for their best and highest good. Okay. Um, now, we, we've talked about this event in, for a while now, but no one quite knows how it's going to affect us. How do we prepare for something like this? To love one another. Mm -hmm. There is no better answer to that. Right now, the negatives that are in charge of this earth, mm -hmm. they are absolutely going, they are doing the worst things that they could ever do right now mm -hmm. because they know that the time is ending mm -hmm. and their time is up. Those that are not, they have not chosen a path of either service to self or service to others. They are just asleep. They're waking up now and in waking up, they're seeing the games that are being played and they're seeing the negatives trying to do things to them, keeping them in servitude, mm -hmm. and they are not taking it any longer. In doing so, they're raising their own vibration okay. with love. Okay. It is all about love and nothing more. So someone doesn't have to fear of being left behind. Only if they have already, if it's been predetermined, they came here knowing this, mm -hmm. they will be left behind. Okay. But being left behind is not as it's thought. It's not that you will be still here. It's that you will, the, the human earth suit will be taken away and that soul full of darkness will go back to where it, its source. Mm -hmm. Those of those who call it Luciferians, mm -hmm. they call it many by different names, but those who chose here to come here and to spread evil in low vibration frequency, they will go home. Okay. And you say that this is coming soon, but soon to a galactic is different than an Earth person. Could be we have linear time. That's correct, which is only an illusion anyway. Mm -hmm. So when we say soon, does that mean within our lifetime or soon within the next three or four lifetimes? What does that mean? There is, it cannot be predicted okay. exactly when. Mm -hmm. Those who know and need to know will know that. Mm -hmm. But others can only can only try to change their life, to accept the love and the light that's all around them, to give to their neighbors, to look at everything with loving eyes. Mm -hmm. When they do that, it's not about waiting for the event. The event will come when it comes. Mm -hmm. Preparing yourself for the event is just being of that nature, to be in high frequency of love, to treat everybody the way you want to be treated. There is so much negativity around right now with the Illuminati and those of the of the negative path, those who sink the, elite, the elites, mm -hmm. they are all panicking now because the time is coming soon, and they know it. Mm -hmm. All they can do is do the worst damage they can, but it won't be enough. There are too, way too many that are outside of the Earth sphere that is helping those of the positive so that the event can happen. Good. Now, as an Arcturian, how are you connected to him? Are you just guiding him, or are you in his head? I'm just guiding him. Okay. He's part of a, of a soul group that is also a Kyrian and many other, many, many other mm -hmm. civilizations, as we all are part of. Did you have anything to do with that planet exploding? Were you part of that soul group? He was. He was. How has that affected him? Like it's affected all of those on the Earth plane. Mm-hmm. 
majority of them who are awake now understand that and know that they were given a second chance. They were not part of the entities that destroyed the planet, mm-hmm. but they were. They didn't stop those who were in charge from proceeding on with their negative mm-hmm. experiments and doing what they did. Is that why he's always longing to go home? Or is that something else? His longing to go home is only because he doesn't fit here. Mm-hmm. He comes from a higher frequency, and he never, ever wants to hurt anybody. And that's the, the environment that he was raised in was all about pain and fear. Mm-hmm. And so it did not match his own vibration. Okay. Now, in order to be prepared for this event that's coming, do we have to do anything physical? For example, do we need to be vegetarian? Do we need to change the way that we're eating? Any time that you can avoid consuming another living entity mm-hmm. is always a good thing. It's a positive thing. The Creator is giving us so much wonderful food here to eat that has grown. Mm-hmm. The entities that you talk about, the meats, those are all living entities as well that have a that have a task here to do on this planet as well. Mm-hmm. But the way an entity can give it up itself knowing it's going for food and fuel for another entity. But it's another thing when it is tortured and killed Mm -hmm. prior to that. Then that energy is tainted. It is not of love. Mm -hmm. It is not of its giving. It's been taken. Anytime that you can avoid consuming and ingesting anything that has been killed that way is a very positive thing. Okay. What happens when we do ingest something that has gone through a slaughterhouse? You ingest and also absorb the energy of that entity before it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. And it is never good. It is a negative energy. It is pain. It is trauma. It is blackness. And when you consume it, you just, your body will absorb that. And it can only go and and store in your body as negative energy. Mm -hmm. So Joe has been trying to become a vegetarian. What's keeping him from doing that? Unfortunately, it comes from his youth Mm -hmm. that, unfortunately, he did not get enough nutrition. They were not fed very well. His uh, father consumed a large amount of the food. Mm -hmm. And the smells that came out of the kitchen were not smells, are not food that they got a lot. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what he holds on to, is those smells. Mm -hmm. So he associates those smells as being successful and abundant. No, he associates those smells with lack. Ah, okay. And of not having. Okay. And the nutrition that he needed as a growing boy. Okay. He's not. He's he's in a position now to have any food he wants, any time he wants. Mm-hmm. And he makes that abundant to everybody he's around. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, he still holds on to those same feelings. Okay. Good. So now we understand where that's coming from. Good. Is there anything that the Ecturians would like to tell Joe before we move on to something else? Just to continue to be yourself, continue to do what you came here to do, and that was to bring love light Mm -hmm. and to bring passion and compassion to all those that you interact with. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that you would like to tell me or anybody else? To be aware of things that are around you. Do not watch that which you call the TV and the news, for it is all false. It is meant to be that way, to keep you in servitude, to keep you in ignorance, and to keep you blinded. Do not at all pay attention to it. Stick within your heart. Know your intuition. Trust your intuition. The truth is within you, and you know it already. Follow it. Very good. Thank you very much. So allow yourself now to disconnect. From the Arcturian. Disconnect. And I'd like to call forth a guide or a higher self who can assist me with these questions today. Who can do that for me too today?
I'd like to ask about the music that Joe hears in his mind all the time. What is this music, please? Joe vibrates with sound, mm. audio, and the vibrations of music please him. Mm. As a child, that was his that was his happy place, as he calls it. Mm-hmm. Was to just listen to the music. He always wanted to be in a band and play, which he did play the drums. But he always connects with music. Mm-hmm. It pulls, gives him emotion that he very much enjoys. But he says he can't turn it off. He can't stop it. It's part of him. Mm. He hears vibrations. He feels vibrations. Mm-hmm. And the music is a part of that, and that's what he has chosen as part of how he attenuates mm-hmm. that, that, that sound. So it's not being done to him. No. It's just who he is. Mm-hmm. That's just part of one of the things that he have always gravitated toward was music and he absolutely loves music good although he does recognize that it's always in his thoughts good and now that we've identified that this music is part of what he has been um using in his mind just to i guess flow it's his happy place it's his happy place as as he calls it good who am i speaking with right now this is higher self very good thank you so he has had a series of dreams back to back where he's witnessed a giant tsunami. I'd like for you to take him to this moment now. He already knows. And tell me what that is. That was when he was part of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. When the islands were separating, he was part of that. And he witnessed the sinking of the islands. Mm -hmm. It was not one island, as people like to think. It was many islands. Mm -hmm. And when when it sank, the tsunamis came. All were affected. Mm-hmm. There's so many living entities on this Earth's sphere right now that had the same dreams because they were part of it. Okay. Why does he need to have these dreams now? To remind him that is not over. That there are still more to come. Mm-hmm. There are many more Earth shakes to come. And mm-hmm. with that will be more tsunamis and land masses that will be absorbed. Mm -hmm. So what can he do with this information? Nothing. Mm -hmm. It is strictly for to remind him that these happened and they will happen again. And to be careful. He has was recently him and his wife were planning on moving to live on the coast in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Literally with one mile within one mile of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And this was a reminder for him not to be so close to the to the coastal areas. Okay. So these are still coming. Okay. So is there anything that we need to know about the coastal areas? They will be affected. Mm-hmm. All those living within the coastal areas will all be affected. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that can be done about that except to move inland. And those whose plans were to will say die mm-hmm. at the coast and will still live by the coast and they still know it. Okay. But he's not one of them. He's not one of them. So he's, he doesn't need to worry about it. He doesn't need to worry about that except to know that he has friends and family that will be by the coast mm-hmm. but unfortunately will be consumed by the incoming tsunamis. Okay. Their, their human bodies will be, not their mm-hmm. souls. That's correct. Okay. Good. Now he tells me also that he has had many dreams where he's had paralysis and I'd like for you to tell him what were those dreams about what was going on when he had that paralysis unfortunately they were not dreams Mm. tell me what that was they were negative entities Mm -hmm. and they come to him occasionally Mm -hmm. he has not had he has not had any visitations for many years, Mm -hmm. but he has had some. They're attracted to his light because on the other side, we are light Mm -hmm. and they're attracted. There was no specific reason to torture him or taunt him. 
they were just to let him know that he is not in charge. Okay. So what about now? How does his body look now? Is he attracting any of these entities now? He was recently, mm -hmm. and he had a, a house cleansing in his mm -hmm. previous house where people came in and they cleansed the house, and they helped to clear out the house. And in doing so, some of those left as well. Okay. What about now? He's doing well now. He's had a couple of, of nightmares. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these are just energy that he's had bent up from days. They aren't to be taken with any seriousness of being attacked. Okay. So I'd like for you to do a body scan right now and let's see if he has any cords that are attached to any people, to any entities. Let's take a look and see. See if there's any cords attached to him. I don't see any. Very good. What about implants? We've already spoken with the Arcturians. I think he suspected that he had been taken on a ship. Does he have any implants? No. No. Very good. Thank you so much. Now, when he came to this life, he was premature. He came about four and a half weeks early. What was the reason that he came in so early? <laughs> he had work to do. Uh-huh. He just wanted to get going. Mm-hmm. And from his dad, we understand that he came here to learn a few lessons. Can you tell him about that? What was the purpose of this incarnation? He came with many, many lessons that he needed to learn. Mm -hmm. He gave himself a laundry list that in many ways could not be completed. But he has completed so many of them that we're all astonished at times. Mm -hmm. His dad gave him so many lessons of hunger so that he could help those that are hungry. That to be cold, where he slept out many nights, cold, shivering, mm -hmm. with nothing to protect him. So he's, now he's able to give clothing to those who are cold. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes with hygiene and his hygiene. With shoes, he grew up with holes in his shoes many times through high school and being very embarrassed of his clothes because they were the hand-me-downs. And yet he buys new clothes now and new boots he gives to the homeless. So many lessons that he came here for that he has learned as a gift from his dad. Hmm. Well, he even said that he tried to commit suicide when he was 21. He did. What happened there? Where did he go? His pain of inadequacy, feeling he didn't belong, that he was ignorant, that all he did was cause pain to people. And there was so much of that, and he did not say the right things, didn't do the right things. He wanted so much to belong to the clique, to the club, mm -hmm. and he worked so hard try to join in, but he didn't realize that he was meant to stand out. And now does he understand that? He understands all of that, and it does not bother him anymore. He doesn't, he doesn't bother him people's opinion of him, if they think he's odd for knowing what he knows and seeking out answers that other people don't even know to ask. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother him whatsoever at all. He knows who he is now. Well, part of standing out is one thing, but he also came in visually impaired. Why that? Why did he select that disability? It's just a little thing to slow him down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nothing. He didn't come. He didn't ask to be brought in with anything major. Just a little small little detail to what he feels kind of made him unique when he was younger, but recognizes now that it was it was a hindrance. What about now? Does he need that now? No, he doesn't need it now. It doesn't bother him now. Mm -hmm. He's grown that way, so he's never known anything different. Mm -hmm. Can we request to have that aligned? It was understood from previous doctors at Stanford 
mm-hmm. that he had an internal cataract mm-hmm. and basically that there was no muscle development in his eye mm-hmm. and his example that he gave Joe was that it's like having a cast on your arm for 25 years mm-hmm. and then take it off. There's no muscle. So there's no muscle behind his eye. Can we develop some muscle today? I don't think he requires it. He doesn't. It's it's not necessary for his right. spiritual growth. Okay. What about his other eye? He says that that now is starting to... It's all part of his standard aging. Mm-hmm. And he, it, will, it will slowly continue to get worse because it has been used so strongly for so many years. And all the activities he's done between the martial arts, mm-hmm. the things he calls racquetball, mm-hmm. his military, he's used his one good eye and gotten a lot of what he calls value out of it. Okay. Can I request on his behalf to improve that eye? Yes, all right. most definitely. So I'd like to call in the spiritual workers, the guides, the doctors, on spirit yes. form to go in there and let's begin working with his eye now. And let's begin strengthening that eye. And if they're using anything specific, let me know so that he has it on his recording. They are just giving it energy, mm. positive, positive energy. Wonderful. Thank you. And while they're doing that, he says that he had an experience of another energy that was wonderful. It was a spiritual hug. He asked for that hug. Mm-hmm. We were there. So many of his guides mm-hmm. and his companions, his soul family, just one big, huge hug. It overwhelmed him. He could not even understand it. Mm-hmm. We just gave him what he asked for, and that was a love hug, and he got it on a level that was incomprehensible to him. Mm-hmm. He'd never felt anything like that before because he hasn't felt that much love in his life. Yes. And the love that he has, as we noticed with his heart, was protected. Yes. But he could not override this. So who are his guides and companions in this incarnation? They're mostly part of his soul family Mm -hmm. and his extended soul family, the Arcturians Mm -hmm. and other civilizations that are all the light. He is surrounded. He is constantly surrounded. He's constantly being given the angel numbers Mm -hmm. at all turns so that he can look them up and be reminded that he is guided, he is loved, and that he is protected. Who gives him the angel numbers? Many of his guides, mm-hmm. as well as those of the angelic realm. Mm-hmm. Is there any particular guides or angels that really work with him more than others? Archangel Michael mm-hmm. is his best friend. Okay, good. He has protected him in ways his life could have been ended so many, so many times. But Michael was there mm-hmm. for the agreement and watched over him because his time was not up yet. Mm-hmm. Archangel Michael is amazing. So who works with him as far as nutrition is concerned? Is there a specific specific guide that works with him? Because he says that he's trying to remove the cravings and desires to eat meat and sugar products, but the cravings are always overwhelming. Archangel Raphael is always there mm-hmm. and is always helping to remove the pain from the foods that he eats mm-hmm. and the, the pain that happens from we'll say from throat to, to rear. Mm-hmm. He's, always, he's had this problem since he was a child. Mm-hmm. He's never digested well, and so much of it's because of the food, but so much of it's because of the, the stress mm-hmm. of his stomach. Mm-hmm. But he has it within him to do it, and he has done it before, but he's, he's went back mm-hmm. to eat meat again. He rarely eats red meat, but he still digests earth, earth small Entities, as we call them. Mm-hmm. And he shouldn't be. So we know that we we attract what we are. Mm-hmm. And when we started this session here today, his stomach was very black. And if we were look at look look at this on a spiritual 
term would he be attracting that type of food that would hurt him, that would have darker energy? Take a look and see if that would have any type of association, any of the pain and suffering. Most definitely, the digestion of the sugars and of the animal fats mm -hmm. do not agree with his digestive tract whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But he continues to consume them because that is what he's been taught. Mm -hmm. The smells that go with it mm -hmm. that override what I would we call the logic, mm -hmm. and he can he consumes. So, if uh, if I may, I'd like for you to take him back to that place where he was working at one time. It was that processing plant where he saw things that weren't up to specifics, cleanliness, that were unacceptable. I'd like him for him to see how things were processed in that plant how that affected his stomach. It didn't affect his stomach as much as it affected his perception right. of how the industry of those killing animals mm -hmm. for our digestion and how they are. They are absolutely dark energy of mm -hmm. a massive scale. Mm -hmm. And all that massive energy is absorbed into the food from the death of the animals mm -hmm. and then is processed out to all of us humans that are all right. All the humans that are on the earth plane. So I'd like for you to take him now to a slaughterhouse and connect with those animals. No. We don't want to go there. He, he knows it. He doesn't have to visualize it anymore. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most horrific places on earth, except for the places where they do that to human sacrifices. Mm -hmm. But he, he knows what they're about. He has visualized them from time to time to help himself to not eat mm -hmm. and consume the meat products. But like so many other things, their memories like this just washed away very quickly. All right. Can I ask for Archangel Raphael, the yes. healer? Yes. To remind him to eat the foods that are grown with love So that when he looks at something, anything that he's about to buy or consume, that can he can feel the energy of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a very good way to do it. Mm -hmm. So just a moment ago, he felt the pain. And now he knows. He knows. The difference. It can't so, be explained. Mm -hmm. So as he goes to choose the food to have Raphael remind him that he wants to eat those foods that give him the best pleasure for his body, the best nutrients, the most love. Yes. We will remind him. Thank you. Thank you very much. He thanks you for that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would like to tell him about what he's eating or what he's doing with his body? He keeps himself in fairly good shape, although he could mm -hmm. exercise more. Mm -hmm. But the lack of food from his youth mm -hmm. just continues to allow him to snack more times than he wishes. Mm -hmm. But he does it. We'll continue to work with him on that. Okay. But to remove that thirst and that that cravings for those that are not for his best and highest good of his body. Good, very good. So now that we have uh, looked at that, I'd like for you to l let me know if there's anybody in his life that is in this incarnation now that he has had contracts with in previous lifetimes that he's had to work out. Let's take a look and see. It 
it appears that he may have other had other contracts, mm -hmm. but when he had his house spiritually cleaned, mm -hmm. she also removed any contracts with any previous entities. Good, good. Now I have a question as to why you brought him here to this session. What did he need to know? More validation mm -hmm. of this. The items that he is seeking are of truth and of light and of love, mm -hmm. and that the feelings that he feels are real, and that what is happening to the planet, what's coming down the line for the event, are all true and all part of what we all know deep inside of us. Mm -hmm. This is validation. Wonderful. Is there anything that I could have asked that I didn't that you would like to tell him today? No. No. I think he's very satisfied and very pleased with setting up this appointment with you, Elba. Very good. Are we complete? We are. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome back. <laughs> How do you feel? Emotionally drained. <laughs> mm, that's a good thing. Feel lighter? Yes, thank you. You're so welcome. Much. You got a lot done today. Wow. <laughs> I feel drained. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think this was? How long did it feel? Let me get you some shungite to oh. get you grounded here. Um, I feel out of time, so I would probably say uh, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Yeah, we're, we're on uh, two hours right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have two hours right now. Amazing, huh? Thank you so much. You're welcome. You did fantastic. Wow. You ever imagine it like this? I had no imagination or expectations of anything. That's this was that way. way. That's the best way. Thank you so much. Wow. You're welcome. You want to share some of this? Um, or you want to keep it private? I don't really remember all that was done, so <laughs> I don't think I had anything personal in it other than well, we'll get the my confrontation with my dad. Or yeah, my, yeah. Well, we usually take that stuff out. That's, that's pretty personal. I, I, I have no problem sharing anything that would be of... Yeah. If it could help anybody, that would be a blessing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Wow is right. So how do you feel? Um, drained. I feel <laughs> reinvigorated, recharged. Uh-huh. Um, I think it's amazing how much stuff you think you remove from your <laughs> childhood that is still there buried. Still there. Because you had a lot of stuff in your stomach and your heart. Your heart was being wrapped you had your heart wrapped, protected. Probably pretty tight without recognizing uh, that. And do you realize that that's, that has affected your life? Absolutely. Yeah. On multiple levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stomach thing, without a doubt, always being in knots from living yeah. in an environment. How, do you, how does your stomach feel now? Well, right now it's a little jittery because I, I'm just, <laughs> I was just kind of, uh, yeah. it's just so overwhelming in the emotional uh, uh, expression and the removal. So, did you come in with any expectation? None whatsoever. Anything that was came out of here, it was just something that would be positive to add to my. Yeah. I, I'm absolutely excited about. And the really everything. interesting thing was the conversation with the Arcturian. Do you remember that at all? Kind of. Hmm. I remember. Well, that may not yeah. be something that you remember. Uh, you know, we had a conversation with the Arcturian that came in there and said basically, it's about this event happening. Oh yes. Do you yes, any of that? I do now. Yes, yeah, the coming event. Yeah, I've read up on that, but um, there's so many different variations of what they so, call it. So, so I don't what know. about? Did you remember what he said today? Uh, kind of, yeah, <laughs> I did. Does it sound like anything that you studied, or was it different? Um, it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's it falls into uh, 
what we know is coming, but there was other stuff I think that was said. Yeah, and that's what's interesting is like a lot of people will think that, you know, you've studied on this and you just kind of made it up. But no. that's why I ask you this because everybody has a different idea of what this event is going to be. And today, you know, it sounded like totally different than other, yeah, other no, people. No, that was not uh, that was not all like I had thought it would. It was interesting. Be, so it's all about your vibration. And I asked, "Is it coming?" And I said, well, "You know, we can't give you a timeline." And that was the most important thing: is that when people tell you there's a certain timeline, right there, I shut it off because you can't. Time is not what we think it is. Right. Yeah. So when exactly. someone says something is happening <laughs> next, uh, right. you know, on October fifteenth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm glad it didn't say it. Yeah, it didn't say that. Yeah. Yeah. So do you recommend this to other people? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. This was a, a fantastic experience. And really, Alba, thank you so much on multiple levels <laughs> for just squeezing us in. We know you're so busy and around the world traveler. Yeah. But squeezing us in was appreciated. So right now we are in Sacramento, California. And you're from this area? About an hour and a half away, yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm traveling all around right now. I'm doing a, a West Coast thing. And, uh, yeah, and thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, there's, uh, I have hundreds of people on my mailing list from California alone. Hundreds. I believe it. I could probably spend months and months out here and not see everybody. But, um, yeah, so we, we are doing this. We are doing an event um, uh, this week in San Francisco. When you see this video, it's already passed. But this is what I'm going to be doing <laughs> more of is actually getting out with people because um, all of us who are here right now are feeling... Like, we don't have someone else to talk to and right. connect with. And just like you yes. came here and um, are on this incarnation right now to help other people, uh, there's others out there. So I'll be doing more of that, is getting out there and gathering people together. so that And we're grateful that you to are. Other. Yeah. Yes. So it's not all about the hypnosis also. It's about let's, let's get the forces together. Yeah. Good. So if you would like a session with me, just go to albaweinman.com. Sign up for my newsletter. It's the only way to get sessions. And when you uh, when you do get that newsletter, it comes out about once a month. Click on the links immediately because like that. They're gone like they're that. They're gone. And um, yeah, today just happened to be a vacation day for me. That's, <laughs> why, that's why you say slip me in. Because <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we did, I did do it on a vacation day. So yeah. Um, so just click on that link right right away and uh, sign up and and hopefully I'll get to meet you sometimes too. So I enjoyed this session very much. Thank you very and much. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Thank you for watching. Bye. Namaste. <laughs> Give me that hug. Mm. Thank you.